And now I'd like to recognize Dr. Parikh for five minutes to present his testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to you and to Representative Plofgren and to the uh, members of the committee uh, for the invitation today. Uh, I also have a written uh, testimony I'd like to include in the record and uh, summarize now. So ordered. Thank you. Um, in thinking about the invitation today, I thought about the fact that we are living just in extraordinary times, and I hope that we all recognize that. When we look around us, the pace of innovation has been spoken about already is extraordinary. We, just in this last week, we heard about the fact they're building blocks for life in material from an asteroid. We learned about the idea that a new pain medication has been approved that is in a whole different biological pathway than the ones before it. Uh, these are extraordinary times. We also see that engineering is taking place. 50 people coming together in a private company building a plane that can go faster than the speed of sound. Uh, you know, Chuck Yeager is celebrating uh, today. And that is, that is amazing. And that happens in a place like this country, in a place where we bring together our federal investments, our academic researchers, our engineers, and those who are willing to take risks in a way that really doesn't happen anywhere else. And we know that that opportunity is still before us. You know, sometimes people say to me, gosh, it's all slowing down. Are you out of your minds? It's increasing. It's faster. And the opportunity is huge. There was a time when Michael Faraday came before a similar group of people 150 years ago. And he's the, he's the guy who really helped us understand electrons and electronics. And he was asked, this is all great, these electrons y'all are working with, but, uh, but, but what good is it? And his answer is this apocryphal answer, which I love, which is he said, I don't know, but someday you're going to tax it. Someday you're going to tax it. And I think that you know, we have entire fields of endeavor out there that we know. Uh, we don't know exactly what they're going to lead to, but we know someday we're going to tax it. And the thing that's changed over time is that other countries have figured this out too, have figured this out too. And so three things are happening at the same time. The first is the, this pace of change is accelerating so rapidly, and the tools and strategies that got us here are insufficient to get us to the next level. Uh, transformational technologies are reshaping our way of life, and you, you've heard about that. Second, we face a, a bunch of threats that are really important. Health, food and water security, environmental resilience, energy production, utilization, storage. Uh, these are huge, big societal challenges that we've got to work together on as an enterprise. And you described it so well, Dr. Babin, as the ecosystem that is, uh, that is here in America. And then third, more than ever, we are competing with other nations, and particularly China. And you heard those statistics. It's worth me saying it again. I'll repeat it. They rival us in talent, infrastructure, and capital investment. Uh, can put our economic and national security at risk. They train more scientists and engineers than we do. Uh, they file for more international patents than we do. They publish just as many highly cited scientific papers as we do and are leading in many critical areas of research and development. I say that again for repetition's sake because it is worth knowing in these rooms, in these rooms, in this building, because this is the place where we can make a difference in that. And so frustratingly, we are not at our full potential right now as a scientific enterprise. Um, and there are recommendations that you heard from uh, Dr. Wilson and Dr. Copan that I am fully behind and I agree with completely. Uh, and so I will move to uh, saying that there are also things that we shouldn't do. We shouldn't shoot ourselves in the foot. We shouldn't do things that slow us down. And so we've got to recognize that this enterprise as a whole, from the federal investment to the workforce, to the industry investment to tax and regulatory policy, it's all part of it. It's what differentiates us from other nations. But when I, look at, when I look at what are the things that slow us down, one thing that slows us down is when we are hurting our own enterprise with self-inflicted wounds. And so I want to recognize the fact that global top competition, and we're taking it seriously, we can do that without demonizing people or international collaboration in the process. Our colleagues of Chinese, Indian, and other immigrant backgrounds make up a substantial percentage of the American science and technology workforce, and they are colleagues and friends and deserving of respect. And we've got to ensure that our drive to compete doesn't alter our humanity. It doesn't mean we have to be stupid or irresponsible, but it means we have to preserve our humanity. Now, when we make America less welcoming to scientists who are, scientists who are immigrants or those who've been here for generations, we only hurt our own competitiveness. Um, and so when we close, our, close ourselves off to international collaboration, we lose the visibility to advances made around the world, and we slow progress for everybody else, and we also have the danger of being leapfrogged. And then lastly, the announcement of an abrupt spending freeze on science and technology uh, that, broke, that happened last week, it really broke trust. It broke trust and it hurt the S&T enterprise. 
It's the kind of action that, even if it's brief, can have a lasting negative impact. You know, many of the scientists that I talk to, particularly those early in their careers, uh, they live paycheck to paycheck. And I was most saddened to hear that some of those young scientists are the ones that are thinking, should I be doing this? Now, I think that, um, that transitions can be challenging, but let's just make sure that we're communicating throughout it, we're saying what the priorities of the country are, and that we're going to continue to invest in the way that I've heard today. Uh, so I'll end there, but thank you so much for the support of this committee. Your work on this committee actually is more important now than it's ever been. Thank you. Amen to that. Thank you. We've had some excellent opening statements from our witnesses so far.